Hey guys. Well guys, this first part of the class we are going to be working on our reading plan because we have been a lot of time without reading plan, so we are going to do it. Uh, and that's what we are going to do this first hour. So please everyone go to your platform, please open my own. And uh, anyway, I'm going to share with you my screen, but we are going to, to read. As you know, we are going to begin with the first part that is Creepy Urban Legends. Uh, that is the short book, and then we are going to continue with the story that we have been reading. That's what we are going to be doing on this first hour. And then on the second and the third hour, we are going to begin with the recording of the sketch, the recording of the final project. So I am going to give you the time to do it. Uh, I am going to let you a little bit more about it on the next hour, so by now we are going to begin with the reading plan. Okay, uh, but do you have your cell phone, Pipe, or something like that? Because I am going to share my screen, so you can check it on your screen. Uh, tell me. Uh, I don't know, but I can detect the logic. Give me one second, because I can listen to you in a good way. Let me turn up the volume. Uh, I don't know, know why, baby. No, I don't know. Can you please repeat the thing that you don't know? Uh, I uh, uh, I'm going to to uh, to show you the okay. the page don't appear the, the no the, just write uh, Los Alpes. Uh, yeah. Try it with Los Alpes, and I guess that you are going to be able to see it. If you are not able. It is something of the computer or the browser that you are using. But I am going to share with you my screen anyway, in case that you didn't do it. Uh, one thing before beginning with this, I sent to your emails the, um, the invitation to collaborate in the file or in the folder of Drive. In that folder you are going to find uh, another folder with your name, so you just have to upload your uh, videos there. So please check and let me know on the second hour if you receive the invitation to, to edit it. David, you, tell me. Uh, uh, a pair are not the school, but I put those and don't have very much. So you don't have less Alpes there? No, other schools I have, but I don't know. Okay, try to access with another school and let's check it if you can do it. I don't know, but maybe. Maybe you can access with another school. Let's try. And if it, it's impossible, then you can check my screen. I am going to begin right now. So everyone, please go to uh, your account on my own and you are going to open the book Creepy Urban Legends. We are going to begin with the one that is called The Swinging Man. One minute to do it, guys. Do you know in which form are the um, the wait um, the usernames and the passwords? Well, I uploaded in the part uh, the announcements part, but at the beginning of the of the semester, I guess. So you just have to return in the part of the announcements, and there you are going to find it. My own. Okay. And you are going to open the book Creepy Urban Legends. Ready? One more minute to do it, and then we are going to begin. Which uh, book are we going to read? Right now we are going to begin with Creepy Urban Legends. Okay.
Okay, we are going to do it. I am going to share with you my screen. And then we are going to begin with the reading. Oh, it's charging. Just let it think. Because sometimes it takes some time to, to load. Okay, so we are going to begin with this one, page 18, The Swinging Man. Teacher, Tell what me. means swinging? It's a person who hesitates. Do you know what is hesitate? Don't forget that you can also click there and you are going to be able to see it in the dictionary. So, to move rapidly in a sweeping curve, to turn on a height, uh, it's like a person who, do you know what is the meaning in Spanish of oscillar? Uh, no, what maybe? Que se mueve y se mueve y se mueve. Sí, como que está oscilando. Sí, no sé cómo explicarlo, pero entiendo la palabra. Yes, it's something like that. It's someone who, who hesitates a lot, who goes from one side to another side, who... Como la gente que está borracha. Yeah. yeah, something like that, when you can be calm, when you, yeah, when you move a lot, a lot in different directions, then you can't stay calm. So let me check the chat really fast. Baby, creepy urban legends. So we are going to begin. I am going to read the first page and then someone else is going to read the next part. So, the swinging man. Running out of gas during the day is annoying. Running out of gas in the dark is scary. Running out of gas in the dark in the middle of nowhere is terrifying. Guys, what is the meaning of running out of gas? What can you imagine? Gas? No. Nope. <laughs> Running out is when something is over. Cuando algo se acaba. And in USA, gas is uh, the thing that cars use to move. Es el combustible, la gasolina. So if I say running out of gas, what am I talking about? Se me acabó la gasolina. Es que hace sin gasolina. That's the thing that is terrifying. So in the middle of nowhere, is terrifying. That's what happened one night to a boyfriend and girlfriend. They were driving on a quiet, uh, on a quiet, unlit country road when the car ran out of gas. Thick woods lined both sides of the road. No houses were within sight. The car rolled to a stop beneath a tree. The boyfriend told his girlfriend he was going to walk into town for help. He asked her to lock the doors and stay inside no matter what. The girlfriend agreed. The boyfriend walked toward the road and was soon swallowed up by the darkness. What is the meaning of swallowed up? This word. <laughs> yeah, something like that. So, what's happening here? What's the situation? We have this guy who is with her, with his girlfriend, girlfriend and then suddenly something happened to the car and they have no gas. So he is going for help and the girl is going to be in the car in the middle of nowhere alone while he is looking for help. That's the situation that we have here. We are going to continue. So who wants to read? Do you want to read or do I have to pick one? No one wants to read? So, Luna, can you please help me? Page 20 and 21. Okay. With little to do but wait, the girlfriend tried to get some sleep. But a soft scratching sound on the top of the car kept her awake. The girlfriend decided a low hanging tree branch must be hitting the car. She wanted to step out and 
sweep the branch away, but he had promised not to open the door. The girlfriend tried to pass the time by listening to the radio. She twisted the dial but could only get static. She listened carefully for the sound of pacing cars. Maybe if someone drives by, she thought, I'll get out and ask for help. But the road remained vacant. Mm -hmm. The only sound was the squish crash of the branch of the car's roof. Finally, the girlfriend colored up beneath her jacket and fell asleep. She awoke in the morning to the sound of silence. Suddenly, something taped against the window. The girl jumped, but it was only a police officer. Confused and scared, she opened the door and asked for what was happening. The officer led her away from the car. He told her not to look back, but the girlfriend didn't listen to the police officer. She looked back and saw the source of the scratching. It was her boyfriend, dead, hanging upside down from the tree. His arm was dangling down and his fingers nails were scraping the top of the car. Squish, scratch. So what happened here? David, what happened here in your own words? Uh, in Spanish? No. Uh, the, the girl was sleeping, waiting for the uh, boyfriend, and a, poli and a policeman are in her little window. And what happened when when she woke up and she went out of the car? What did I she find? Listen, the, the, the police say that she looked back. Okay, the police says like, okay, don't look back. Le dijo que no mirara para atrás, but what happened? Uh, she looked. She looked and what did she see? I don't listen. No? So, who can help him? Harold, what did she see? What happened when she looked back? What? What happened with, when the girl looked back? What was there? <laughs> what happened when the girl looked back? The police said, like, uh, don't look back. But she didn't listen. Boyfriend? So what happened? Tell me. Is the boyfriend teacher? The boyfriend, oh. yes. What happened with the boyfriend? Is dead. Is dead. So in the middle of the night, she was in the car. She was listening the screech scratch. So she wanted to look, but she made a promise. So she didn't do it. Maybe if she have done it, the boyfriend would be alive. But note he's dead and the car is all scratch. So let's continue. No, no more. So do you what do you think about this one? Do you think that this is this is something that happened? We don't have more explanation. I mean if we click on the next one. Uh we are not going to, to find any more of the story. Do you think that it's possible to have this situation? Do you think that really Suddenly, in the middle of nowhere, there was a girl, and then the boyfriend appeared dead, and that's it? Is it something, Is it something that happens in the real life or not? I think so. There's weird people out there. Okay, there's weird people out there. So do you think that maybe it was like a serial killer or something like that? Maybe. And what do you think of that? Do you know Maybe. do you know famous famous serial killers or not? Have you ever listened something about a serial killer? Yes. Who? Uh, Garavito. Okay, for example, he was one really bad because he he wasn't like just only like a serial killer, like that category, but he was also a person who hurt kids. So it's Ted, awful. Ted Bundy, maybe? Ted Bundy, for example, the things that Ted Bundy did were like extremely Ted, Ted awful. Bundy. It's like creepy. What did you think did about you him? What, baby? Did you watch the movie? Yes, I did it, and I have seen a lot of documentals and a lot of uh, movies that are inspired on him 
And I also listen the tapes of the Bundy on Netflix. So what did you think of this guy? Did you know him? Did you know Ted Bundy? Okay, so you just listen it. Who knows him? Who knows something or some things of the ones that he did? Who can tell me something? Um, I, I have watched like all the movies inspired by him. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And basically he was like really, really handsome and he used that to kill chicks and, and rape them and yeah, all that things. Mm -hmm. Yes, and the thing with the Bundy is that as he was really handsome, he also, I mean in the trials, he had like a huge number of, ha of fans who were supporting him because he always said that he was innocent. And he never recognized that he killed that huge amount of girls since he was going to be killed. And maybe, I don't know, a year before or some, not, not even a year, some weeks uh, before, he recognized that he did it and that's when, when he confessed. So he confessed like 30 something murders, but people believe that it's more than a hundred. That's another serial killer. Do you know someone else? For example, Pablo, do you know serial killers? Pablo, are you there? I guess that he's not here. Pipe, what can you tell me? Do you know serial killers or not? Have you ever listened something about a serial killer or not really? Mm, I think that uh, the same serial killer like David. Okay. Mm, and our own play baby. And what about Jack the Riper? Have you ever listened about him? No. In Spanish? Jack el Destripador, have you ever listened about him? No. no. Yes, yes? okay. Uh, what have you listened about him? I only like reading that expression in movies, but nothing else. Nothing else, just the movies. Does someone else have listened something about this guy? Jack the Riper? No? Well, this was another serial, ki serial killer that was, he was really, really famous because he had a way to work that it was creepy, actually. But yes, maybe, I mean, I read this urban legend and I thought of that. I mean, I, I never imagined that it was like the tree or it was something like ghost. I think that it was a serial killer because uh, that's the only explanation that I can find of this. I don't know, as Alejo was saying, there are weird people in the world, so I guess that maybe this urban legend is something that really happened. And the girl never realized it. Maybe if she realized it, he will be alive, or maybe she will be dead too. So we will never know. Now that we have finished with this one, we are going to continue with the other book, the book that we have been reading, that is The Curse of Raven Lake. We have read the introduction. I don't know if you remember that we read the prologue. What do you remember of the book, The Curse of the Raven Blake? That one day something fell like to a frozen lake, and then uh, some creatures arrived from the hole that that thing did. Yes, and what happened with the creature? It looked like a man. So it was something really weird. It's basically that. We have a hole in the middle of nowhere, and one day someone appeared or some creatures appear from that hole. That's what we have for now. So we are going to begin with chapter number one, and uh, we are going to check what, what's going to happen with these characters. So I am going to read this first page, and then Sarita is going to continue, okay? So chapter number one, Alone. 
The snow uh, mobile turned and hit it into the entrance of the long driveway. From behind his helmet's, uh, helmet's dark mask, Charlie saw the fresh snow. He smiled. Sarita. Um, he drove his snowmobile down the hill. He had been planning this weekend for over a year. His mom and dad had promised he could spend a weekend alone at the lake cabin when he turned 15. No parents, no big brother, no boss. Digo, to boss him. him. To boss him around. And no annoying little sisters. Just Charlie. He's a no mobile, the snow, and the frozen ice of Braden Lake. Okay, we have read sure. this before. I'm sorry, baby. We have read uh, this before, but we are going to do it again because I'm sure that you forget it. Continue, baby. Charlie used an old key to open the front door. He stepped inside and took a long sniff of the musty cedar boards that lined the walls and the ceiling. Then he grabbed his bags from the snowmobile. After carrying an armload of firewood, he filled the pot belly top with birch bark and twigs. He started a blaze. Charlie grabbed a large metal pot from the kitchen and filled it with, with snow. He boiled it on the top of the stove. Since the cabin didn't have running water, he would use the melted snow for drinking and washing. He added larger pieces of wood to the fire. He took a he took off his snowmobile gear and sat down in an old leather chair by, by the stove. The warmth felt great after the cold. Two hour ride on his snowmobile. Okay, Sarita, what happened here in your own words? Uh, he arrived to the, to the house uh, near the lake and then he was like, preparing the water that he was going to use to wash and do everything he has to do. Yes, he was like organizing the place. Basically that he arrived, he was really happy because he was going to be on his own and he began to organize all the place. We are going to check some words. So for example, do you know what is the meaning of a snowmobile? Pues como que esas motos que usan para la nieve, ¿no? So yes, those uh, means of transport that people use to go in the snow. What about um, musty? What is the meaning of musty? <coughs> Who can tell me? I mean, if you open a dictionary, it's going to be like a spelling of dampness, decay, or lack of fresh air. So that means that musty is a bad smell, like, like cuando hueles humedad, for example, that is like an annoying smell, but you just have to do it because it's all over the place. That's musty, a bad smell. What about a uh, pot belly? We have seen it before. What is pot belly? Who can tell me, or what can you imagine if I say pot belly? No, era como eh, something that had like a curve that, um, like I don't know, like a plate, a round plate, because like a pot and belly because of the shape. Yes, but uh, it is like <clears throat> something, something like that because of the shape. Uh, it is like some things that you have at home, but it's pot belly. Pot belly, like literally, as barriga, but it is uh, this thing with the shape of a belly. So that's it. Uh, let's continue. Let me check if you if we have another weird word. What about blaze? What is the meaning of blaze? You have it there. You have it on the screen. In your own words. What baby? Yes, something like that. But it's a uh, blaze is something that is like really shiny. What is shiny? Brillante, resplandor. So he started a blaze. In this case, they are talking about like a fogata, but they are saying that he started this and it was really, really shiny. Yeah. So I guess that the rest is like really easy to understand. Let's continue. 
So, Harold, can you please continue with these next two pages? Okay, okay. Go. For today's example, we need to use a PBR to know. Throw the big cabin windows, currently installed, that the bird doing. Branches here, staying under heavy clumps of the snow. The sky was far blue. The snow on the lake was untouched, except for deer tracks that could across it. Charlie looked past the near the tree. He could see the, the cabin next door. The people who owned the cabin, the vicars, were an older couple who never come to Raven Lake in the cold winter. The vicars spent every winter in the Arizona sun. Charlie wouldn't, wouldn't have to worry about them missing up his perfect weekend. The something called Charlie A was saying no there was playing playing at times at this strand of small right written from the Becker's chimney. Some ones were was was there. So Harold, what happened here in your own words? So we will pick the. Puedes hablar español, tocar inglés. Of course, English. You are in English class. Eh, family, I think. Was the vacation? So I will pick the first. So, uh, Shirley was there at home, and he realized something. What happened with the neighbors? What was the name of the neighbors? We will know what happened in this. So here I have. Harold, what was the name of the neighbors? You read it. Uh, Beckers. The Beckers. Yes. What happened with them? What can you tell me? Or what happened with their cabin? Pues que ellos no estaban. In English. Chimney. Prendía. Okay. So, uh, something happened. I mean, Charlie was saying that the Beckers were like a bit weird because he 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 never realized uh, about them. I mean, they, he they were never like around. So he was trying to say, okay, I am not going to think about them. I am just going to think that I am going to be here. I am happy, and no one is going yeah. to 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 hurt my perfect weekend. But when he was looking through the door, he realized that the Baker's chimney um, had smoke. So someone was in that in that cabinet because, and it was weird because as you can read here, they were extremely, they were extremely old and they never came uh, to this cabin, especially if it was snowing. So it was weird to have someone there. Let's talk about vocabulary. What is the meaning of clumps? You have it there. What is clumps? Clumps? Mm, not really clumps. No, no, no exactamente clumps. In this case, in this context, what is clumps? In this context. So read it, clumps. Do you have it in the dictionary? I am showing. I am showing. Actually, clumps is like a group of something. So if you say clumps of snow, it's a lot of snow that is grouped in one place. Group. Yeah. What happened with this word sagging or sag? What is the meaning of that? It's a synonym of sing. Who knows? Sagging, sag. S A G. Sagging. What is that? It's a synonym to sing. Nope. Undirse. Sagging? No, no. Sagging is like if you say we're sagging under heavy clouds of snow. Sagging is hundirse, se estaba hundiendo. Synonym to sing. ¿Sí ves? Pero, ¿pero si acaso no era? ¿Me dices como sinking? ¿Qué, baby? 
thinking. Thinking is like thinking, like oh. pensar. Y en el caso de hundirse, no. mira, si lo ves acá, es decir, thinking, sí, también es hundirse, pero sag o sagging es el sinónimo. So it's exactly the same thing. Think and sag are the same thing. So they are synonyms. Como cuando dices silla y butaca. Sinónimos. Sí, la forma es diferente, todo eso, pero son sinónimos. Significan lo mismo, hundirse. So in this case, the trees or the leaves of the trees were singing under heavy clouds. Estaban hundiendo debajo de la nieve. That's what he saw. Let's continue really, really fast with uh, vocabulary. Let me check if we have something else. What is the meaning of drifted? Or drift? What is that? Derrape. Derrapar. Something like that. ¿Y qué es derrapar? Como deslizarse. So, it's when you move, I mean, if, for example, you go really, really fast, when you do that, you drift, the vehicle is going to, I mean, to move like in a horizontal way, but it's going to advance slowly. Va a avanzar más lento de lo que venía, porque está en otra dirección. So, drift or drifted, in this case, is to move slowly. Okay? That's the reason why. Okay, guys, we are going to continue really fast uh, with the beginning of chapter number two. So, uh, Sophie, can you please help me reading this first part? Or no, I am going to read this one and Sophie is going to continue with the next page. So, chapter number two, Under the Eyes. Charlie frowned. No, see Miss Becker will be over any minute snooping around and asking a hundred questions. The last thing he wanted was company. So, he was really mad because he, he didn't want to be with someone else. So, that's basically what's happening. He was mad. Let's continue. Sophie, can you please help me? Sophie, are you there? Um, okay. Go ahead. Uh, this thing? Yeah, 16 and 17. Um... He had just the, mm, the soft shining, shiny, closing it a bit to keep more warm, shiny, to keep more of a warm air from the living cabin. Then he gripped a bag from the kitchen table and walked it out to the ship. The small wooden shrug, Charlie, mm, mm, whether up his fish here, two poles and ice out here and five gallon pills. He emptied a bag of minions, minion, minnows into a small bucket. With his arm loaded, he walked through the snow to the lake. It took, it took less than five minutes to use her to dry two 12 inch white holes to holes through the thick lake ice. Charlie was proud of how he was using the other. It was part strange and part skill. As he used to have races his, with his older, his older brother to see who could crack through the ice first. But when Charlie got to God, his brother stopped competing. Once he had two lines in the water, two fish started coming. He could hardly get one shiny silver fish of a line before the next line was down, having snatched another fish. It was the best fish in Charlie could remember. Okay, so what's happening here, Sophie? What did you understand? What's Charlie well, doing? about um, Charlie, uh, there, there was like fishing. So yes, basically it's that. And Charlie so decided to fish, and what else? So, he, Charlie was proud uh, of her, his skills. Yes, so, and, and what? He had like a uh, older brother who teach him how to fish, something like that. 
Yeah, it's something like that. So basically, he was really mad and he decided to run away and to go fishing because he didn't want some company. So he's talking about a lot of, uh, we have a lot of vocabulary here because he's describing some tools that he used to open a hole in the, in the ice. It is not that easy to open a hole in the ice to, uh, without breaking the entire ice. So he was using uh, some things in order to do it. And he went fishing. Suddenly he began remembering uh, that when he was uh, younger, he used to do this with his brother, but now he is doing this on his own. And he catch just a small baby fish that it was really, really shiny. So, uh, And he was happy because he did it. So he was really proud, as Sofia was saying. Let's check uh, really fast the vocabulary. So uh, what about shed? What is this? We have here the provider is Hazel in Hong Kong. So what is that? We should write it very. You have it on the screen. This is a tramp. If you don't what baby? Because it's a drop down list. You can. Uh, the CMS this is a what? To the tramp. Right Como trapa. Yeah, it's something you can use it to talk about something like that, like the trap, or also it can be the place that covers something, like a house. It can be something like that, but in this case, it's a trap. Let's continue. What about wooden shark? What is wooden? Do you know it? Made of what? Hecho de madera. Hecho de madera, made of wood. And what about shark? What is shack? Or what can you imagine if you have shack? It's like a tree, like everything ready? Shack. It is like a place made of wood. Shack is like a chosita. So, a wooden shack, a chosita made of wood. So, it's not that chosita. Okay, let's continue. What about auger? What is auger? Uh, here. Uh, you have it on the screen. What is auger? An auger. Yes, it's this one. The one that you have in the image. This is a tool that people use to open holes, especially in the in the eyes. So you just have to put it there and you just have to begin moving it like in circles. And you are going to be able to open the hole. What is the meaning of drill? That That's easy, you know it. We, we, we can write the same that is here. Any full performance result should be given. Taladro, taladro. Mm -hmm. That's it. So, okay. We are going to stop right now and we are going to continue with the reading. Well, the next class of reading plan. Oh no, I guess that we have time to finish with this one. Really, really fast. So, uh, Pablo, do you want to read? Here is asking for the few hours and a few cycles. Uh, yes. Go ahead. Please help me with page 18. So, uh, he keep any fish that were bigger than his hand. He carefully dropped everything smaller back though. Though the ice he sat on the upside down five. Warning the lake with the bright sun overhead. He could actually see a, a few feet into the water. He wondered if so many fish were down the swimming in the fried water. Slowly, the water went. Dark summit, summit was passing beneath the whole summit hue. So he was there fishing, and what happened, Paulo? What happened with the water? A, a, so he was fishing and he realized, I mean, he was really happy thinking about all the fishes that were swimming. But suddenly the water went dark. What is the meaning of dark? 
Oscura. Oscura, yeah, so something happened though. I am going to finish with page 19. So, Charlie watched as the dark shape passed by and the water was light again. He felt as if, as if his heart was skipping around inside his body. Charlie thought he'd miss his chance to see the fish, but then it was back. It wasn't just big, it was gigantic. It was as big as the sea lions he had seen at the zoo. Things don't grow that big in Raven Lake, he thought to, to himself. Charlie watched as the dark object swam slowly underneath him. Suddenly, he felt a tug on his line. He tried to wrap his fingers around the wooden handle of his fishing rod. Before he got a good trip, the entire pole was ripped from his hands and pulled through the ice. Charlie blinked. His fishing rod was gone. What happened here? In your own words, really fast, who can tell me what happened? That suddenly appeared in the raven like a really big uh, fish. Uh, he was like scary and happy at the same time, and then it just disappeared and he lost his will. So yes, he saw it and he thought that it was really impossible to have something that big in Raven Lake. It was impossible. So we, he was a bit scared, so that's the reason why he said like, skip uh, a bit somewhere. Skip in a road in, inside his body, como que el corazón se le iba a salir. So he was really, really scared. And uh, he tried to catch it, but it was like impossible too. He was a bit scared. So we are going to stop. Ahora sí. We are going to stop and we are going to continue on the next class of reading plan. So guys, that's all for today. And that's it. I see you in the next two hours. Bye bye. Bye teacher. Bye teacher. Bye. Bye dears. Hi teacher. Hi. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> and say that the furniture visit was added